All right, welcome back to the channel. So the word on the street is that Canelo Alvarez will be fighting Jamal Charlo or David Benavitez next after those absolutely spectacular pay-per-view numbers came out for the Caleb Plant fight. Um, nobody can compete with the PBC. Let's talk about that in this video. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So, I don't care if you are a fan of Canelo Alvarez or not a fan of Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez's fight against Caleb Plant uh, did exceptional numbers, well beyond what I thought or industry ex or other industry experts thought it would do, and that is terrific news for boxing. It is terrific news for people that want to see good fights. It is a situation that I think everybody should embrace and run with because it's going to get help. I do believe let us get some exciting times in boxing now. And also, it puts to rest for sure this idea that the PBC is going out of business or that Showtime is going out of business or that pay-per-view is not a real thing. Let's talk, let's talk about it. First and foremost, Canelo Alvarez, the numbers that the guy did when everything is put together is estimated to be over a hundred million, over a hundred million dollars, um, 800,000 pay-per-views, uh, at 99 at night, um, excuse me, at $79, uh, a pop or $80 a pop runs to somewhere around $63 million. And then, uh, and then after that, you have an $18 million gated at, at, uh, in Vegas, which pushes the total over 80 million. And then you have um, the different endorsements that took place. You have the foreign rights and all that. Some people speculate that that could be over $100 million against Caleb Plant. Now, Canelo Alvarez is a free agent, right? However, the idea that Canelo Alvarez is going to leave Showtime in a situation where if he does generates $100 million in a fight, and the numbers that people use say that the man made $50 million off it. He had a $40 million guarantee. He exceeded it. Say the man made $50 million, $55 million in the fight. That, my friends, is 20 over about twice as much as what DAZN was paying him for his fights over there on DAZN that were not on pay-per-view. So... If Canelo Alvarez can get that type of money, those do those type of numbers, get that type of exposure fighting a guy like Caleb Plant on Showtime, why would he ever go back to fighting on DAZN? I think that this absolutely blows Eddie Hearn and, and, and DAZN out of the realm of possibility. The, uh, Canelo Alvarez would be dumb. And Eddie Reynoso would be dumb to hide that light under a bushel for half the price over there on the zone. And actually, when you now look at the money that he was able to generate in this fight, if you say, well, what if he was able to do that for the last six or seven fights? You will see how much money Canelo Alvarez actually lost standing going over there by the zone. So I cannot see him going anywhere or doing business with any other anybody other than the PBC Showtime, maybe Fox, maybe Fox pay-per-view, but still within that PBC umbrella, because those are the guy that those are the guys that stuck with the pay-per-view model, that are consistently having successful pay-per-views and showing that all of these people that were talking about the zone and how pay-per-view was dead and all of that were absolutely wrong and they were trying to sell you sell people a, a bill of goods. Now, as far as what that means for boxing fans. I think it means we're going to get better fights because when you have pay-per-view fights, people are not going to typically get, you know, if it's not a competitive fight, they're not going to pay for the pay-per-view. And when you know that you can, you can make more money by fighting better competition and guys whose names are known, that is going to open up Canelo Alvarez to fighting guys like Jamal Charlo, like, uh, like David Benavitez. My understanding is that even go <laughs> leading into this fight, they were talking about, uh, you know, taking a little bit of a break, but come, trying to come back in the May time frame. And you know where that is. That's at Cinco de Mayo. And then that's at summer, September 16th dates. Those are the fights 
dates that I think you can see Canelo, excuse me, Canelo Alvarez um, you know, on planning for. And the fights that are the big fights are Jamal, are, are the Jamal Charlo and the David Benavidez fight. I think more than likely the first fight that you're going to see out of him is the David Benavitez fight because the David Benavitez fight, he is the last guy at 160. He's the only real guy that to fight at 168 pounds. I don't, you're not going to see him fight uh, Demetrius Bivol. You're not going to say, see him fight uh, Arthur Baturbiev, you know, over on either on ESPN or on, or on DAZN because those guys do not have pay-per-view mechanisms. And, and why would you go with something that is not broke? The Showtime has had the, some, I do believe they've had the biggest pay-per-view events that, that we've seen in sports history. Um, now, yeah, in sports history, the pay-per-views. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say, I won't get into the arguments about, you know, what you, how big fights were in the 70s versus now and all that stuff. But within my, within this century, within the 21st, uh, within the 21st, is it the 20th? Yeah, the 21st century. You had Floyd Mayweather Jr. numbers that he did huge numbers with Floyd Mayweather Jr. They're doing, they did, and Canelo Alvarez uh, was part of that. They've done really, they did big, very big numbers with the Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather fight. They know how to sell pay-per-views. The PBC knows how to pay, how to sell pay-per-views, know how to do the marketing. They've, and obviously, you know, they've got everything that they need to, to do that. I can't see him going over to fight, going up in weight class to fight, guys that are that much bigger that really do, names don't draw that much and do it for a set fee over on the zone or risk you know the zone getting into pay-per-view uh, uh their introduction into pay-per-view which by the way they're they are doing and they promised they would never do so that organization just does not have it just doesn't have the track record to do uh, to to do that so um, I, it was reported earlier today that they are going to start uh, uh, promotions for David Benavitez versus uh, versus Canelo Alvarez. When, and I'm sure what that means is every fight that you're going to see from Jamal Charlo or or, or uh, for Jamal Charlo or David Benavitez or anybody else that he may be interested in to fight, you're going to hear it start talking about fighting Canelo, fighting Canelo, fighting Canelo. And I'm okay with that, man. Again, I think that that is really good for boxing. Now, to all the people that say that I would have some issue about the face, the quote-unquote face of boxing being Mexican, no, sorry, okay? And I can go back into history and tell you when there was a point in time where that was the case and you we were getting a lot of really good fights and that was when Oscar De La Hoya was the quote-unquote face of boxing before Floyd Mayweather Jr. and after Mike Tyson. There was, and I don't, I'm not sure if you guys consider the, what the, you know, the difference between you know, Mexican-American and Mexican. I'm not into that. Oscar De La Hoya was the biggest name in boxing for, a, for a several years. And when that was the case and he was doing those paper and he was doing those pay-per-views on HBO, we saw great fight after great fight after great fight. Sometimes he won, sometimes he lost, but you got to see Shane Mosley. You got to see Shane Mosley. You got to see Tito Trinidad. You got to see Bernard Hopkins. You got to see um, uh, Fernando Vargas, Pernell Whitaker, Julio Cesar, Julio Cesar Chavez. Some of those might not have been on pay-per-view, some of the earlier ones, but you get my drift. There were a lot of really good fights being made with Oscar De La Hoya as the centerpiece. And I do think that that is really good for boxing when you have somebody that is the centerpiece and everything else kind of goes around. It's usually the best when it's a heavyweight, but like I said, and I, I will say and say again, that Eddie Hearn blew that. If Eddie Hearn and and if Eddie Hearn had decided to have Anthony Joshua fight Deontay Wilder and unify all of those belts, and then Tyson Fury could have came out of retirement or whatever and whatever, and they all could be fighting around a guy that had all those belts, that stuff would be centered up there in the heavyweight division. But he blew it, and now Canelo Alvarez, being a very bright guy, man, very good business moves, got away from the zone, went back to where he originally started his career at Showtime. And now, um, monetarily, I don't think that there's any argument whatsoever that that when you can do 800,000 pay-per-views against a guy that pretty much nobody knows, man, that tells you that as soon as you fight somebody that people are really interested in and you can promote the potential of that fight for just a little while, maybe one or two fights, you're going to get million pay. You're going to get a really, really big event. And that big event is good for everybody in boxing. But anyway, that's my take on the situation. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuce.